Now we Muslims, we are in the firing line. The well that you have amassed, the commerce in which you fear a decline, the houses in which you live. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, what are your considerations? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an honor by calling us khaira ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an honor because we should enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. Even if you know one verse of Islam, as long as you know it correctly, it is your duty to propagate it to the non-Muslims. How many full-time da'is do we have? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that his deen, this deen, it will prevail with or without you, with or without me, the rubbish that we are. Allahu, Allahu, Allah. Dr. Zakir Naik. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Rasulillah. Wa ala ali wa sabi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul in kana abaukum. Wa abnaukum. Wa ikhwanukum. Wa azwajukum. Wa ashiratukum. Wa amwalun iqtaraftumuha. Wa tijaratun takshawna kasadaha. Wa masakinu tarbawnaha. Ahabba ilaykum min Allahi wa rasulihi wa jihadin fi sabilih. Fatarabbasu. Hatta yaati Allahu bi amri. Wallahu lahdi al-qawm al-fasiqin. Rabbi shuahli sadri. Wa yassirli amri. Wahlul uqdatan min lisani. Yafqaw qawli. My respected elders. And my dear brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God be upon all of you. The topic of my talk is Dawa or destruction. I started my talk with a quotation from the glorious Quran from Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 and Surah Tawbah happens to be one of the most militant surah of the glorious Quran why is Surah Tawbah one of the most militant surah of the glorious Quran because it is the only surah it is the only chapter in the glorious Quran which does not begin with the formula Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful otherwise every surah every chapter of the glorious Quran begins with the formula Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful but Surah Tawbah does not begin with the formula Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim the reason is because it is one of the most militant surah of the glorious Quran for example if you are walking along with your sister or along with your mother along the streets of Mumbai and if there's a hooligan if there's a ruffian who snatches the handbag of your mother and runs away what will you do? but naturally you'll run after him and after you catch him you will not say Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh may peace be on you you will not say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim you will get down to the subject directly you will say, hey mister, give the handbag or else I'll break your neck. Hey mister, give the handbag or else I'll break your neck. You will get down to the subject directly. Bismillah is not called for. And if you read the first few verses of Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a peace treaty between the mushriks of Makkah and the Muslims. And this peace treaty it was unilaterally broken by the mushriks of Makkah and by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number 5 he is giving the mushriks of Makkah an ultimatum warning that put things straight in four months time otherwise a declaration of war and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving an ultimatum a warning to the mushriks of Makkah Bismillah is not called for that's the reason some scholars say that Surah Tawbah does not begin with the formula Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim this is one of the reasons there are several other reasons 
and by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches verse number 24 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is addressing us Muslims now we Muslims we are in the firing line Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Kul in kana abaukum. say whether it be your fathers wa abna'ukum your sons wa ikhwanukum your brothers wa azwajukum your spouses wa ashiratukum your relatives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking what are your considerations are they your fathers are they your sons are they your brothers are they your spouses are they your relatives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking what are your considerations and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and says wa amwalu niqtaraftumuha wa tijaratun takshawna kasadaha wa masakinu tardawnaha the well that you have amassed the commerce in which you fear a decline, the houses in which you live. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, what are your considerations? Are they your fathers? Are they your sons? Are they your brothers? Are they your spouses? Are they your relatives? The well that you have amassed, the commerce in which you fear a decline, the houses in which you live. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, what are your considerations? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and says, if you love all these eight things more than Allah, His Rasul, and doing jihad in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's way, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fatarabbasu, then wait. Hatta yati Allah bi amri. Wallahu lahdil kumal fasqeen. Then wait until Allah brings His destruction unto you. And Allah guides not the fasiq people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Muhammad chapter number 47 verse number 38 wa in tatawallaw yastabdil qawman ghayrakum thumma la yakunu amsalakum and if you do not do your job then Allah will substitute in your place another people thumma la yakunu amsalakum and they will not be like you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Ali Imran chapter number 3 verse number 110 you are the best of people evolve for mankind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an honor by calling us khaira ummah that is the best of people whenever there is an honor it is always followed up with responsibility there is no honor without responsibility for example a principal has got more honor than a teacher a teacher has got more honor than a clerk similarly a principal has got more responsibility than a teacher a teacher has got more responsibility than a clerk there is no honor without responsibility Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an honor by calling us khaira ummah that is the best of people don't you think we have a responsibility and the reply is given in the same verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah Enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong and believing in Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an honor because we should enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. If we do not enjoin what is right and do not forbid what is wrong, then we aren't fit to be called as khaira ummah. We aren't fit to be called as Muslims. It is the duty of every Muslim to convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. And many Muslims, they give the excuse for not doing the job. They tell me that, Brother Zakir, you know one day when I'll have the knowledge, then I'll start doing Dawah. They think one day when they'll have the knowledge, one day when they'll become a big Sheikh like Sheikh Ahmad Didat, they'll start doing Dawah, that time will never come. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 4, book of knowledge, hadith number 3461. Propagate even if you know one verse. Even if you know one verse of Islam, as long as you know it correctly, it is your duty to propagate it to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Ghashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21. Fadakkir. إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْتِرْ Your job is to convey, giving hidayah, it is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We don't have to wait for results. We have to convey the message. Giving hidayah, it is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3. Wal Asr, inna al insana la fi khusr, illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat, wa tuwasaw bil haq, wa tuwasaw bil sabr. By the token of time, man is verily in a state of loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those who believe وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And do righteous deeds وَتْوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ Exhort people towards truth that is da'wah وَتْوَاسَوْ بِالْصَبْرِ And exhort people towards patience and perseverance. There are minimum four criteria for any human being to enter Jannah. Iman, righteous deeds, exhorting people towards truth that is da'wah and exhorting people towards patience and perseverance. If one of them is missing, under normal circumstances, you will not enter Jannah. You may be a very good Muslim. You may be offering Salah five times a day. You may be giving Zakat. You may be fasting in the month of Ramadan. But if you do not do Dawah, under normal circumstances, you will not enter Jannah. Not only Dawah is important, all four criteria are equally important. Iman, righteous deeds, Exhorting people towards truth, that is da'wah, and exhorting people towards patience and perseverance. If one of them is missing, under normal circumstances, you will not enter Jannah. If Allah wants to forgive you, it is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 48, and Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 116, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushakabih. Allah will not forgive the sin of shirk but he will forgive anything else to whom he pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in surah Ali Imran chapter number 3 verse number 104 وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةِ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ let there arise out of you a band of people inviting towards all that is good enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong and they are the ones to attain felicity here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about full time da'is and surah asr chapter number 103 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about part time da'is and it is the duty of every Muslim to be a part-time da'i. And according to Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 104, it's talking about full-time da'is. How many full-time da'is do we have? Like how we have full-time doctors, full-time lawyers, full-time engineers. How many full-time da'is do we have? These Christian missionaries, there are hundreds of thousands traveling from one country to another, spreading their religion. How many full-time da'is do we have? How many? And according to Surah Asr, chapter number 103, it is the duty of every Muslim to be a part-time da'i. And those who are full-time da'is, they are the ones to attain felicity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nahl, chapter number 16, verse number 125. <laughs> And invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preachings and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us in the glorious Quran in no less than three different places. In Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 33. In Surah Saf chapter number 61 verse number 9. And in Surah Fatah chapter number 48 verse number 28. Huwa arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al haq it is Allah who has sent down his messenger with the religion of truth so that it will supersede over all the other religions over all the other isms whether it be Christianism, Judaism, Secularism, Buddhism, Atheism, Anyism Islam is destined to supersede them all, master them all overcome them all and how much ever the mushriks did not like it and with a different ending in Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 28. billahi shahida. And enough is Allah as a witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
that his deen, this deen, it will prevail. With or without you, with or without me, the rubbish that we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you and me to make his deen prevail. If we think that if we do da'wah, then Islam will spread, then we are the biggest fool. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity to make a while the sun is shining. If we think that if we don't do da'wah, then Islam will not spread, then we are the biggest fool. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and earn a prophet's reward. I would like to end my talk with a quotation from the glorious Quran from Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 33. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than one who invites others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, works righteousness and says that I am a Muslim. وَأَخْرُوا دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ جزاك الله دعا الله والله والله وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين